USP 800 started when several clinicians approached USP about putting together an enforceable chapter, so that means from a federal enforceability standpoint, putting together a chapter that identified how to contain hazardous drugs as well as how to appropriately handle them, both in terms of facilities as well as what we need to do as healthcare professionals. It's evolved because it's been written, for example. A group got together, and that group was comprised of pharmacists and nurses and physicians and industrial hygienists and certification personnel and others who knew the issues of both compounding as well as how we could be protected against hazardous drugs. That chapter was written as a final document and published in February of 2016. So it's not a new chapter at all. It's been around for more than three years, approaching four years actually. And what we need to make sure that folks do is they know that this was not there out as a guidance. This is out as a federal standard and it's something we need to comply with. A lot of people think that it's a bit overkill for these standards, but it's not. We have known since the 1970s in the medical literature that there are risks from these hazardous drugs to individuals, not to the patients who are taking them. Those are the folks who intend to get those drugs. The risks are to healthcare workers who might be inadvertently exposed to them. That information has been in the medical literature since the 1970s, so it's not a new piece of information. USP 800 does not apply only to pharmacy. It applies anywhere in the healthcare system. From where a drug, one of these hazardous drugs, arrives at your organization all the way through where it's discarded. So think of it in terms of you have someone who receives those drugs. They're transported somehow and they get stored. They're stored and they're moved to the compounding area, they get compounded. That gets transmitted somehow to a nursing area or a procedural area where it's going to be administered. From that point, it either gets discarded or, or cleaned up. And in some cases, there's even spills we need to deal with. So it's that whole transit of hazardous drugs through the organization. It is not just pharmacy. There are some areas in health systems that aren't traditionally thought of as those areas where chemo may be administered, but surgical suites, imaging areas, um, uh, urology suites, there's all sorts of conditions that may prompt a, the need for chemo to be administered the same time that a procedure is going on. So folks who are in the surgical suite, for example, when a mitomycin is being used in an eye, need to know that they have to be protected, not only with the PPE that we talked about, the gloves, the gowns, all of that, but in that case, since they're not working in a biological safety cabinet, because we can't put the patient in a cabinet, for example, we need to be able to protect ourselves. So we also need to be protecting eye and respiration during those times. There's lots of ways that people can approach how to be compliant with 800. And we have to remember this is not new information. I like to look at the disciplines that have been very cognizant in putting out guidance documents for their disciplines. I look at ONS for oncology nursing. I look at ASHP for health system pharmacy practice. Those are probably the two biggest areas that have been there. And they have been providing for years information for their own members to be able to protect themselves against some of these risks. So 800, though people may look at it as a new document, even though it's been around for three and a half years and approaching four years now, the information that's been in there, for example, has been in an ASHP guidance document since 1983. We have known what to do for that long, but it's taken an emphasis of a federally enforceable standard to make this work and get, really get people's attention. 
I know people can be overwhelmed about all of the things that they need to do, but if you break this down into easy to use components and involve all the right people, this is not, this is a team sport. It's not a one person operation. You need to involve nursing and pharmacy and risk management and materials management, anyone else involved in your organization who has a piece in this. They need to know what those are. And if you break it down into smaller components, you'll be able to accomplish this goal. Because remember, it's all about protecting us in addition to protecting the patients and the environment.